Welcome back. Now we get to study inheritance. And that is another great relationship between classes. Inheritance is so powerful. We will start with a video. Inheritance. It's another relationship between two classes. Inheritance. It's a little more complicated than containment, but it's going to simplify our code a whole lot. Before Python, I thought that the biggest boon to computer science was object-oriented programming, and particularly because of this inheritance relationship. Before object-oriented programming, if you had a big body of code, which was called spaghetti code, and then the boss said to you, well, I want to add a new type of widget into this code. You had to go through all of your huge body of code and put in if statements to decide whether or not we're talking about this new type of widget and then do the appropriate coding for it. Now that there's object-oriented programming and, in fact, inheritance, you have a big body of working code. And when you have to add a new type, you inherit from that big body of code, and you make a new type, and you just have all of the new behaviors in a new class, depending on the old class. What that means is that when we have a new object of the child class, say with the name Sunny, and Sunny is asked to play music, play music is found right in that object. But when Sunny is asked to speak, there is no speak in that object. So the interpreter goes up to the parent class and runs that speak. So while before we had spaghetti or what's really called functional code, and when we wanted to add some more functionality, it got more and more complex. Now, when we add functionality, we still have simple, clear, object-oriented code, and it is the interpreter whose flow of control is very complex and spaghetti-like. We don't have our code looking like that anymore. That's inheritance, and using that, then the old body of code does not change unless a new bug has been revealed by the new code. So the old code gets tested from various angles more and more as more types of widgets are added. This was a huge improvement over spaghetti code to have object-oriented code. So we'll look at that now. We'll look at the inheritance relationship. First, I want to show you how it is diagrammed in the unified modeling language. It is the second and the last diagram detail that I like to share with my classes because it helps me so much when I'm trying to figure out what are my classes and how should they behave with each other. The classes involved in an inheritance relationship are a parent class and a child class or perhaps a base class and a derived class, or a superclass and a subclass, or a default class and a specialized class. You hear all these words for them. And to diagram, you make an arrow touching the superclass and coming from the subclass. You say the words is a. So if you start from the tail of the arrow, the child is a parent. In fact, it is exactly the same class plus some more behaviors or some different behaviors. Let's look at an implementation and then that'll help you a lot in understanding what I'm saying. Well, let's see how inheritance is implemented. Right now we're going to make a greeter class and from it we'll inherit a named greeter class. So our greeter class is as simple as the very first class we ever made, nothing to it, class greeter, and we just have the greet method. However, named greeter, we have these parentheses on the class definition line. They don't mean anything like a call. What they mean is that named greeter inherits from greeter. It has its own methods. Here we have a magic init and a say my name. So when we make a name greeter Fred, the interpreter goes into the name greeter class, looks for that magic initializer, 
And then what goes in there is the self that is developing and the name Fred. And we put that name inside the self. When we do Fred Greet, we go into Fred's class, which is a name greeter. And there is no greet. Therefore, we go into the greeter class because we're inheriting from it. And there we find the greet. And we say, hello, world. And then after, we're going to say my name. So we go into Fred's instantiating class, name greeter. I'm, and here we say Fred. And this is the miracle. I can still instantiate the greeter class. Nothing has happened to the greeter class. I added all this facility to the greeter class and called it a name greeter, but the greeter class is the same. I can make a greeter class and he knows how to greet. We're going to do this again, but this time you'll see that both named greeter and greeter have a greet. So we're going to be extending the functionality of the greet method. Here on line 27, we're making a named greeter, Fred. And we know what happens. We go into the named greeter class. We find a magic initializer. We run that, and the interpreter comes back. But however, when we do the greet method of Fred, we go into the name greeter. We find that greet method. We come on down here, and it calls greeter.greet. We are now doing syntax as if we were the interpreter. This says go into the greeter class, find that greet method, and run it, passing along the same self. Hello world happens, and then we come back where we were called, and we say I'm self name, and that gives us Fred. Then we say Fred by, to do by, we go into the instantiating class, the named greeter, and there is no by. Therefore, we go into the greeter class, and we find by, and say by now. If we try to make a greeter, that's fine, just like before. He knows how to greet, he just says hello world, and he can say bye. A nice point to realize is that when you have a working class, like the greeter class, I can inherit from it and get all that functionality. I don't really even need to see it as long as I can find it and the interpreter can find it. We're going to do this again in greeter six, but this time we have three classes. These class diagrams can get very complicated and that's when you really need them. So we have a greeter class, a name greeter class, and a hip greeter class. When we instantiate a hip greeter, we go looking in the hip greeter, and there is no magic initializer. Therefore, we go up to the named greeter, and we find it, and we're done. We do not go up to the greeter because we found it. The method was resolved right here. We put the name Rocky inside the self. We come back. When Rocky says greet, we look first in the instantiating class. That's it, the hip greeter. We call greet. But this is pushing us up to the name greeter greet. So we're up here in the name greeter greet. This self is the same one. We pushed it along. In the name greeter greet, we go up to the greeter greet and say hello world. When we come back, we come back where we were called. And we will say then, I'm Rocky. But we're going to again come back from where we were called and we'll say What's up? Okay, you're on for an exercise. I'll see you.